If you have a drawing or lines in Photoshop that you would like to make thicker or thinner without having to redo everything, I'm gonna show you a couple easy methods to do just that. Hello friend, my name is Brendan from bewillcreative.com and let's start things off with the two methods to make our lines thicker in Photoshop. So before you do anything, you need to make sure that your lines layer is on a transparent background. So if you've been drawing on a new layer with a transparent background, then great, you're already good to go. Or if you've already cut out the image background, then that's good as well. However, if the lines and the background are attached, you'll need to separate them. Now, luckily that's very easy to do, but it's a bit outside of the scope of this tutorial, but I share how to do it up in the corner right now, if you'd like to check that out. To begin, we'll right click on our image layer or the line layer, and then we'll convert it to a smart object. That way we can go back and edit things later on. Now we'll go up to filter, other and minimum. And we can adjust this radius slider to change the thickness of those lines. Now there is one setting here that's quite important to note depending on the look you're going for, but taking a look at this edge here, if I change my preserve setting to squareness, look how that changes a little bit. It makes this look a bit more boxy. So this is something to be aware of and it kind of depends on the look you're going for in your lines. Anyways, for this design, I want this to be at roundness because it just suits it a little bit better. And I'll just expand this a little more to make those lines a touch thicker and click OK. Now that is applied as a smart filter that we can easily double click on to reaccess and adjust the thickness of afterwards. And you can look at the before and after really easily, just like that. Now, the second option is to expand your selection, which is a little bit more of a basic method and doesn't offer that roundness or squareness option like we had before. So I'm gonna just delete this smart filter by clearing the smart filter there. And we need to first create a selection of our lines. That's really easy to do by holding command or control and clicking on the thumbnail of the lines here. So that will turn all of those lines into a selection like so. We'll then go up to select, modify, and then expand. Now here you'll set the amount of pixels that your active selection will expand outwards to make your line thicker. So I'm gonna do this by eight pixels here and click okay. Now that selection will expand as you see here, and we need to fill this active selection with the color of our line. So I'll set my foreground color to black as you see here. Then we'll create a new layer and press alter option and delete to fill that selection with black and we'll press command or control D to deselect it. Now the reason I didn't do that right on my image layer is because it was a smart object so I couldn't edit it, but the same process would apply just holding alter option and delete. And then that selection will fill with your chosen foreground color and therefore expanding the lines of your image. So those are the two ways to expand lines, but what about shrinking them down to make them a bit thinner? Well, in that case, there are still two different options, but they are a bit different. Now, really quickly, if you enjoyed those last two methods, make sure to hit that like button down below to let me know you're enjoying the tutorial so far. Over here in our next example of a nice cupcake design, we're gonna switch things up and start things off with the selection method. So once again, we want to create a selection of this cupcake or these lines by holding command or control and clicking on the layer thumbnail to create a selection of those lines. Then we'll go up to select, modify and contract. Then we'll set the amount of pixels that we want to contract our selection by. And if your lines are thin, the amount of pixels you choose here shouldn't be very high. Otherwise you're gonna pretty much have invisible lines. So I'm gonna just contract this by two pixels and click OK. Now that the selection is contracted inwards, we just need to add a layer mask by clicking on the layer mask icon to apply that selection and remove that excess bit of the lines. So if I hold shift, I can just view that before and after, and you can see how I've made those lines a little bit thinner. Now for our next example, I'll just delete that layer mask. We're gonna once again use a filter, but this one is gonna be a bit different. We'll first convert our layer to a smart object by right clicking, going to convert to smart object, and then we'll go up to filter, other, and this time to maximum. Now it's a little bit backwards because maximum means you're shrinking and minimum means you're expanding, but that's just something to remember. Now, just like before, we have very similar adjustments with the squareness and the roundness setting, depending on what you're going for. But this time when you adjust the radius, it's going to make your line thinner. And if you go too crazy, your line's gonna be pretty much non-existent. And it doesn't do a very good job in areas where the lines are crossing. So I would just recommend to shrink it down to a point where everything looks even, including the areas where lines are intersecting. So let's go down to around two pixels 
and I'll click OK. So now, once again, we have that smart filter enabled. I can turn this on and off to see the before and after, or I can just double click on this smart filter to adjust these settings afterwards whenever I need. Now this works for any type of line or drawing in Photoshop, including the line tool. However, when you're using the line tool, which you can find here within the shape tools, you actually have a weight setting up here. And by adjusting this weight setting, you'll change the width of it every time you create a new line. In most cases, it's more worthwhile to adjust this weight setting because when you create a new line layer, you have a shape layer which offers a bunch of different advantages versus if you use the expand methods or contract methods that we just talked about, it'll make your adjustments destructive and it will also rasterize the layer, which isn't something that you want. So instead, it's going to be better just to change the weight of the line and then just create a new line because it is super easy with the line tool. Now, if you're wanting to learn why raster shapes aren't as good as vector shapes and how this would affect the look of your shapes that you create, I'll leave a video up in the corner right now sharing how to use the shape tool and all of the important settings that you should know. Now, hopefully this tutorial helped you to edit your lines. And if it did, make sure to hit that like button down below and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Anyways, my name is Brendan from bewillcreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.